Now, as the big crowd awaits the start of the game, let's check the lineups and batting orders for the game tonight with Ralph Kanger. Okay, Bob Murphy, for the Chicago Cubs. The leadoff batter will be the shortstop, John Kessinger. Batting second and playing second, Glenn Becker. Batting third in left field, Billy Williams. Batting fourth at third base, Ron Sano. Batting fifth at first base, Ernie Banks. Batting sixth in right field, Al Sanger. Batting seventh, the catcher, Randy Huntley. Batting eighth in center field, Jimmy Quayle. And the pitcher, Ken Holtzman, batting ninth. For the New York Mets, the leadoff batter will be Tommy Agee in center field. Batting second and playing second, Bobby Fowle. Batting third in left field, the National League's leading batter, Cleon Jones. Batting fourth, playing first base, Don Clendenin. Batting fifth at third base, Ed Charles. Batting sixth in right field, Ron Slavota. Batting seventh in catching, Jerry Grody. Batting eighth, playing shortstop, Al Weiss. And the pitcher, Tom Seaver, batting ninth. The umpires are taking their stations. The home plate umpire will be Chris Palacutis. At first base, Doug Harvey. At second base, Frank Desiland. And the umpire at third will be Shag Crawford. The Mets play in the second game of a three-game series with the Chicago Cubs. The Mets won yesterday's ball game. Here in the second is Tom Seaver against Ken Holtzman. And tomorrow afternoon, it'll be Gary Gentry against Bill Hand. In a joint announcement made by WRTV, the sponsors and the New York Mets, as a service to Mets fans tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, it's the concluding game of this Mets Cubs series, the entire three-game series in Chicago next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, will be televised over New York 9. So the game yesterday, televised, tonight televised, and originally tomorrow's game not to be televised, will be televised and will be on the air both radio and TV at 2 o'clock. The Cubs with a four-game lead over the New York Mets, the lead of two games in the loss column. The Mets have won 46 and lost 34. The Cubs have won 52 and lost 32. The Mets have won six consecutive ball games. The Cubs have lost their last four. And the Cubs on this road trip have won three and lost six. So far this year, the Mets and Cubs have met nine times. The Mets have won four and the Cubs have won five. So manager Leo DeRocher, Chicago Cubs, in front in the National League race by four games over the New York Mets. In third place in the National League Eastern Division, St. Louis, 11 and a half games back of Chicago, and a total of seven and a half games back of the Mets. Pittsburgh in fourth, they're 12 games back of the Cubs. Philadelphia in fifth, 14 games back, and then Montreal. Now the New York Mets have taken the field. Western Division with the Dodgers taking two from Atlanta. The Dodgers have taken the lead in that division by a half game over the Atlanta Braves. Cincinnati in third place, three games back. San Francisco in fourth, three and a half games out. Houston in fifth, seven games behind. And San Diego in sixth, 21 and a half games out. After the series with the Cubs, the Montreal Expos in town to play Friday night, Saturday afternoon. That afternoon game, a four o'clock ball game and a doubleheader on Sunday starting at 1.05. Now here from Shea Stadium with a tremendous crowd on hand, our national anthem.
Houston, sung by what might be the biggest total crowd ever here in Shea Stadium for a National League Baseball game. A tremendous crowd on hand. We have standing room only, people all around the ballpark waiting for the second game of this three-game series to start. Now the coaches taking their respective stations. Tom Seaver, the starting pitcher for the Mets, tying his shoelaces. Tom comes to the ball game with a record of seven consecutive runs. And now here for the play-by-play as we go along the way, Bob Murphy. All right, Ralph, and hi, everybody. What a beautiful night for the big game. One of the most comfortable days of the summer. Humidity hardly noticeable. A gentle breeze blowing from center field in toward home plate. As Tom Seaver throws in the last of his warm-up pitches. This will be the third time this year Seaver has faced the Cubs. Very early in the year, in late April, he lost the game to Ferguson Jenkins and the Cubs 3-1 to here at Shea. In that game, he gave up three home runs to Jenkins, Kessinger, and Santos. He redeemed himself in strong fashion at Wrigley Field when he went the route to defeat the Chicago Cubs 3-2. to Don Kessinger, the switch-hitting shortstop. Having an excellent year, hitting at 295, he already has 106 base hits. Stepping in to lead off against Tom Seaver. Tom defying the odds now. He's won 12 of his last 13. And the first pitch is inside and low, ball one. Merlin Rube Walker coaching at third. Joe Amalfitano coaching at first. Way inside, ball two. Fever goes behind on Kessinger. Two balls and no strikes. Don Clendenin playing first base. Bobby File at second. Al Weiss the shortstop, and Ed Charles is at third. Now Fever over his head, the 2-0 delivery. And a fastball, strike one call, it's two and one. In the outfield, Cleon Jones to the left. Tommy Agee in center. Ron Swoboda is the rounded right. The on-deck hitter is Glenn Becker at the second baseman. And a foul hit into the crowd behind the third baseline. No play. The best rallied in the last of the ninth inning to win yesterday with 55,000 in Shea Stadium. The largest drawer I have ever heard in the big, beautiful stadium went up. Mets are now two games behind Chicago in the loss column. The 2-2 delivery. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Tom Fever leads the pitching staff in strikeouts. He now has 114. Runner-up is Jerry Kuzman with 91. At a curve to Glenn Beckert, low outside, it's ball one. Beckert hitting 303, has 15 runs batted in. He recently returned to the disabled list. Pass ball, good one on the outside. One ball, one strike. A standing room crowd at Shea. Those commuting on the subways were being advised on the subways not to come in if they had no tickets. Low and outside, it's two and one. An afternoon game tomorrow. Gary Gentry pitching against Bill Ham. At a drive in the air to right field, back goes Swoboda. He's in front of it, makes the catch. <laughs> two outs, nobody on. Top half of inning number one. Tomorrow's game will be both broadcast and televised. The Mets and the Cubs have now played nine games this year. The Mets have won four. The Cubs have won five. The always dangerous Billy Williams is the hitter. He's batting 294. He has 47 runs batted in. He's a dead ball hitter, and they play him around to right. And a fastball, a strike on the inside corner. Year in and year out, Billy Williams is among the National League leaders in doubles and triples. Next pitch by Seaver, a change-up curve, strike two call. Beautiful curve as Seaver pulled the string on it. You could almost count the stitches. 
No fever with a fastball jammed over the inside corner and a slow curve. Now has a two-strike count. Now the windup by Tom, the pitch. Fastball, swing and miss. Beautiful job of pitching to Billy Williams. He strikes him out on three pitches. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. In the middle of the first inning, the Chicago Cubs nothing, the New York Mets coming to bat. Whether you're looking for a hot or a cold sandwich or a complete dinner, make Pinellas Restaurant on Jefferson Street your headquarters for the finest in Italian or American dishes. At Pinellas, food and cocktails are served daily from 5 p.m. on. They're closed on Sundays. Choose from Pinellas' wide selection on their dinner menu, and they always have those famous steak sandwiches. Many people in the area find Pinellas Restaurant the ideal stopping-off place after the races. It's just 400 yards from the new grandstand entrance on Jefferson Street. Each day, Pinell's Restaurant has a different special. And Pinell's is the type of place where you can just relax in their informal atmosphere. Reservations are not necessary, and there's always plenty of free parking. Italian or American dishes, choose your favorite and enjoy the wonderful cuisine at Pinell's Restaurant, Jefferson Street, Saratoga Springs. Why not stop by at Pinell's Restaurant tonight? the entire crowd is gathered here at Shea. You can hear the Let's Go Mets chant. Tommy Agee leading off against lefty Ken Holtzman. And a drive hit down the right field line by Tommy Agee. Fair ball, a base hit going into the right field corner. Agee is on his way to second. He rounds second. He's going for a triple. He makes it standing up. Triples into the right field corner on the first pitch thrown by left-hander Ken Holtzman. Hard hit line drive just there inside the line rolling into the corner. Now the hitter is Bobby File. Bobby hitting 294 in the nine games since he joined the Mets from Tidewater. And now the Cubs here in the very first inning are going to bring the infield in. That's vivid proof of what they think of Tom Seaver's pitching. They hold Seaver in such a steam, they'll try and head the run off in the first inning. And a grounder foul past the Cubs dugout, no play. This you rarely see in baseball. The infield in with a runner on third in the very first inning. But Leo is going to play this one close to the best, and figure it's going to be a tight pitching duel. The infield inside. Now the pitch. Ground ball hit hard. Base hit. Down the left field line for Bobby File. AG in to score. File trying for a double. The throw coming in. He's safe. York in front, one nothing. He hit a hard ground double between Santo and the bag, right down the line. He hustled and beat the throw from left fielder Billy Williams. Now Cleon Jones. Cleon leads the National League in batting. He drove two runs in to tie the game in the last of the ninth inning yesterday. Raising his RBI total for the year to 53. Foul on second base, nobody out. And the pitch by Holtzman. Foul to back into the screen, strike one. And now the Cubs are sending the sign to their bullpen and we're going to get warm up action. Ted Abernathy starts to warm up. AG let off with a triple down the right field line, a foul double down the left field line. Let's lead, 1-0, and a one-strike count on Cleon Jones. 
Now Holtzman delivers, but time was gone. Leon Jones asked for time. And now plate umpire Chris Felicutis is calling Gil Hodges. Out of the dugout, he notices something out in center field. I believe pertaining to the batter's backdrop. But he fails and may bother someone. It appears to be a youngster up in the top of the backdrop. Several youngsters, as a matter of fact. Well, that's what it is. Three youngsters somehow had climbed to the top of the uh, batter's eye to watch the ball game. And naturally, Chris Palakutis was fearing for their safety. And he asked that the announcement be made to have them get down. Now, a one-strike count on Cleon. Bobby File on second. Nobody out. Here's the pitch. Outside, one ball, one strike. Ken Holtzman has won 10 and lost four. Three of his four setbacks this year have been to the St. Louis Cardinals. Now the tall left-hander's pitch on the way. Curve, low outside, two balls and a strike. Holtzman has a lifetime record against New York of four wins and five losses. He beat the Mets earlier this year. Now the pitch to Cleon, a swing and a miss, it's two and two. Mets striking furiously on a triple to right by A.G. and a double to left by Fial. Cleanup batter Don Glendonan is the on-deck hitter. Now it's two and two on Cleon Jones. Cleon hitting 352 to lead the National League. Now the 2-2 delivery. And a foul back up into the crowd. No play. Many banners drape the stadium here tonight. A standing room crowd. And we are disappointed for those who came to Shea Stadium and were unable to get in. See several hundred fans still milling around out in the parking lot area because they were unable to buy a seat. The 2-2 pitch. Just outside, 3-2. Kenny Holtzman, three and two on Cleon Jones. We remind you again that tomorrow's ball game, the final game of the series, will be both broadcast and televised. We'll be on at 2 p.m. It's three and two on Cleon, the payoff pitch. Strike three called, a curveball by Kenny Holtzman. Holtzman made quite a pitch on Cleon on three and two, a curve at the knees. Now one man away, it brings up Don Glendennan. He played a key role in the victory yesterday when he doubled against the fence in left center field in the last of the ninth inning. Now Kessinger chases the runner back to second. Bobby File on second, he doubled home Tommy Agee after Agee tripled down the right field line. Glenn Dunnan has been red hot since coming to the Mets. And on the inside corner, ball strike one. Don Glenn Dunnan in 17 games with the Mets has driven 15 runs across the plate. And the pitcher on the way, a swing and a miss. That big swing by Don Glenn Dunnan. Kenny Holtzman trying to settle himself down after being shocked by a run the first two hitters up. Bobby File leads off second. The pitch to Clendenin is in tight. It jammed him. One ball and two strikes. Over the weekend, Gene Mott brings the Montreal Expos in for a four-game series. Friday night, Saturday afternoon at 4 p.m., and then Sunday, a doubleheader. Pitching one and two. Fastball just a little bit high. It's two and two. He almost had him struck out.
Ben Holtzman. 23-year-old left-hander from University City, Missouri. And the pitch on the way. A swing and a missed strength three. When Benin tried to hold up on his swing and is questioning Chris Pelicutis about the call. But Clendenin is out on strikes and it brings up Ed Charles. Now the glider steps in, not two men away. Holtzman has settled a strike out, Cleon Jones and Don Clendenin. Two very dangerous hitters, and now the glider is up. And it's popped up foul, coming over Ernie Banks, hoping for a play near the railing, no play. Just beyond his reach, it lands on the first box feet by the dugout. Flashing the bat around, in comes the pitch. Swing and a miss on a fastball. And the count is strike two. Ted Abernathy has now just about stopped working in the bullpen. As Holtzman seems to have gotten a hold of himself. Here's the pitch on the way. Inside and low, one ball, two strikes. That's lead, one nothing on A.G.'s triple and a double by Bobby File. That's what dearly loved to pick up that second run. And a flooping fly ball into short center field. In comes the center fielder, Qualls, and he has it for the out. Side retired, and Holtzman did a good job of settling down after giving up a run on two extra base hits. One run, two hits, no errors, and one left. At the end of one inning, the New York Mets won, and the Montreal Expos, the Chicago Cubs, beg your pardon, nothing. We were a little confused about giving the scoring. It's because we were concerned with the breaking up of the public address system while Gene Jarvis performs on the organ. Well, that's kind of wild. You know, we'd like to remind you that a Mets game at Shea Stadium is a great place to have your next outing. The Mets will help you select the best seats available, whether it's for 40 people or 4,000. And if you're planning a free game luncheon or buffet, take advantage of the beautiful restaurant facilities which are available for these purposes. Additional information may be obtained by calling or writing the ticket manager, Shea Stadium of Flushing, New York. The zip code is 11368, and the telephone number is 672-3000, 672-3000. Now the second inning is Jay and Ron Santo will be leading off for Chicago. Santo hitting 296. Leads the National League and runs batted in with 74. And Fever's pitch is low outside, ball one. This has always been an interesting matchup when Tom Seaver pitches to Ron Santo. One of the best pitchers against one of the best hitters. On the outside corner, a call strike. One ball, one strike. Now Tom picking up his sign from Jerry Grody. And Sano asks for Tam and steps out of the batter's box. Here at Shea Stadium, five games so far between the Mets and the Cubs. Chicago has won three. The Mets have won two. The one-one delivery, breaking ball way outside, two and one.
Now Jerry Grody is setting up that low target. Fouled back towards the screen, and that Nick Jerry Grody. Grody hit by that foul ball. And trainer Gus Marsh comes out to see if he can help him out. That ball seemed to graze Jerry right at the top of the mask. It nicked him in the head. Jerry is standing up and rubbing his head. He seems to be all right. The mask, I believe, took most of the blow. But apparently it hit the top of the mask and then grazed the top of Jerry's head as it went on by. The count is two and two on Ron Sano, and now trainer Gus Marsh goes back to the dugout. Ernie Banks waiting on deck. Now Seaver winding the 2-2 delivery. Swing and a miss, he got him. That's number three for Tom Seaver. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is New York Mets Baseball on WKJ-FM 102.3 in Saratoga Springs, New York. Ernie Banks, the hitter, had a curve over the middle, strike one call. WIZRAM 930. Fastball, low outside, two balls, one strike. One delivery. Fouled. Back toward our TV booth and out of play. One away. Nobody on. Top half of the second. Second game of the three-game series. And the pitch by Seaver. Swing and a miss. He got it. Fourth strikeout for Tom Seaver. Tom has struck out four of the five per first five men to face him. Now right fielder Al Spangler. Spangler, a 10-year veteran, batting at 244. When the Mets were in Chicago last, the first weekend of May, Spangler was hitting 320. Leo DeRocher has been platooning Al Spangler and Jim Hickman at right field. And platooning Don Young and rookie Jimmy Qualls in center field. The best pitching a right-hander tonight is Qualls and Spangler. It's over at the knees, strike one call. Breaking ball, strike two. Seaver has a beautiful curveball so far. Looks like it's rolling off the end of the table and right where he wants it. Now the windup, two strike pitch. Fastball just outside, one ball and two strikes. Tom is in that good pitching groove, and he usually is. He's a rapid worker. Now the pitch. Stuck him out. Seaver strikes out the side and has five and two innings. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. At the end of an inning and a half, the New York Mets won, the Chicago Cubs nothing. Hi, this is Bob Walton at Walton Sports Shop, urging you to stop in and see us when you need camping equipment. Now that vacation time is here, have you found that in checking over your equipment that you need something additional? Then stop in and see the wide selection we have to offer. Walton's carries pack frames, canteens, and mess kits. If this is your first year of tenting, then be sure that you see Walton's for all styles of tents, air mattresses, and Coleman stoves and lanterns. Walton's carries a full line of famous name sleeping bags. Of course, at Walton's, hunters can find everything in one convenient location. Guns, ammunition, and hand-loading equipment. And rifle scopes to make those long shots surer and safer. 
For the golfers, be sure to visit Walton's Par 3 room where you'll find a complete line of golf equipment. Shoes, clubs, bags, carts, and a rainproof jacket for just $9.95. A complete line of equipment for all sports is what you'll find at Walton Sports Shop, Lake Avenue in Saratoga, where sportsmen cater to sportsmen. In the home second inning, Ron Swoboda is the leadoff batter against East left-hander Ken Holtzman of Chicago. Holtzman, 10 wins and four losses on the year. And the pitch to Swoboda, high, ball one, a fastball. Cubs in the infield and the outfield straight away against Ron. And a drive well hit in the air to left center. Going back as falls. He's got it. Oh, that ball was tagged by Ron Sloboda. Ron had two big hits in Pittsburgh. It looks like he's out of his batting slip. He ripped that one. A line drive to left center, and it was hit so hard, it cost him a base hit. It stayed up just long enough for Jimmy Qualls to angle on and take him the alley. Jerry Grody facing Ken Holtzman. That's the lead, 1-0, last half of the second inning. And a high foul ball, wafted back into the crowd, no play. Jerry Grody hitting 234. 22 runs batted in. Now Holtzman getting his sign from Randy Hundley. And the pitch on the way off the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Ken Holtzman, just 23 years old. He's tall and slender, 6'2", 175 pounds. He has good stuff. At University City, Missouri. 1-1 delivery, hit foul, back towards the crowd, no play. Now Jerry Grody steps out of the batter's box just for a moment. And that's got a run in the opening inning on a triple by Tommy Agee and a double down the left field line by Bobby File. The one-two pitch to Grody under the knees and the count of season. They are playing a twinator in Philadelphia tonight. And the Phillies behind Woody Freeman beat the Cardinals 7-1 to in the first game. Nelson Bryles was the loser. Now the 2-2 delivery, bounce foul, no play. Montreal and Pittsburgh playing a twinighter in Pittsburgh. The first game is tied 3-3 in the last half of the eighth inning. Dick Raddatz is now pitching for Montreal, their fourth pitcher. Joe Gibbon, the third pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Right here, Ken Holtzman with a count of 2-2 on Jerry Grody and the pitch. Last ball inside, 3-2. and two. This afternoon, the Giants beat Houston again, winning 10-3. Ron Bryant, the winner and relief of Bob Bolin, Denny LeMaster, the loser. Pitching 3-2. and two. Ground ball hit down to third. Bobble by Ron Sano. The throw to first, too late. Brody hit a hard ground ball that broke off Sano's glove, squirted through his legs, and in behind him. It will be an error charge to Ron Sano. One out and one on, Al White coming up. The Atlanta Braves play the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium later tonight. The Dodgers beat Atlanta a doubleheader to go back into first place last night before a crowd of over 42,000. And later tonight, Cincinnati plays in San Diego. Al Weiss looks at a curve, up to the outside, one ball, no strike. Now 
Now Kenny Holtzman getting his sign from Randy Hudson. Got a check swing by Al Weiss. The fastball is high, 2-0. Oh. Now the receiver will be coming up next. Single game tonight at Baltimore. The Orioles lead the Yankees 1-0 after an inning and a half. Dan Bonson against Dave McNally. McNally 12-0 this year. Over the inside corner, Frank gets 2-1. In an afternoon game at Fenway Park, the Tigers beat the Red Sox 6-5. Matt Dodson, the winner, Lee Stang, the loser. Carl Yastrzemski hit number 24. It came in the seventh, nobody on. Line drive, dropped, and goes through the legs of Kessinger. Brody goes to second. He'll be safe there. And Weiss is on first. Hard hit, low line drive, right at the feet of Don Kessinger. It appeared he had the ball trapped on the first hop, and it slithered out of his glove, through his leg, and into short left center. It's an error, charge to Don Kessinger. Both Brody and Weiss have hit the ball hard, but directly at an infield. First Sano, and now Kessinger. Now Tom Seaver is the batter against Ken Holtzman. Runners on first and second, one man out. The only man who retires, Swoboda, really hit the ball hard. A line drive to left center that was caught. Now the Cubs look for the bunt. But a half swing and a foul ball back toward the street. Washington three, Cleveland nothing at the end of two in Washington. Joe Coleman pitching for the Senators. Juan Bizarro has replaced Steve Harkin for Cleveland. Oakland at Chicago, a night game. Chuck Dobson against Billy Wynn. They're not yet underway. Kansas City plays a night game at Minnesota. California, a twinighter at Seattle. Full swing and a miss on the count strike two on Tom Seaver. New York Mets with runners on first and second, one out. The pitch to Seaver. Ground ball through the hole. They hit the right field. Brody around third will try and score. The throw by Spangler, not in time. The run is in. Mets lead, 2 nothing. Seaver drives to run in. And there was some excellent coaching at third base by Eddie Yost. As Spangler charged the ground ball, he seemed to be eyeing a play at third, not figuring that Grody, who's not fast, would try and score. Yost caught it out of the corner of his eye and waved Grody around, and Jerry comes in to score. Runners on first and third, the next lead 2 nothing. The batter is Tommy Agent. A.T. unloaded the triple down the right field line, his first time up. Low and inside, ball one. Run batted in for Tom Seaver, his third of the year. Runners on first and third, one out, now the pitch. And a fly ball again hit toward the right field corner. Sanger won't be able to reach it, and this ball is up against the top of the wall. It's in play. Weiss has scored. Seaver is on his way to third. A double for Tommy Agee. A double to right by Tommy Agee, and he just missed the home run. Ball here just below the orange home run line above the bullpen. Weiss comes around to score. The Mets lead 3 0. Runners on second and third, one out. And Bobby File is coming up to hit. But now, probably on sign from the Cub dugout, Randy Huntley has gone to the mound. The Mets lead 3 0 as they quickly cash in the defensive lapses of the Cubs infield. Now Seaver hit a hard ground single into right field, bringing home Jerry Grody. 
And Tommy Age, he just missed a home run. This fly ball well hit the right field on the downward flight. It's just under the orange home run line between the line and the padding that protects the outfield. About 355 feet from home plate. Tommy Agee has two for two. And now Berlin Rube Walker, one of Leo's coaches and a younger brother of the Mets pitching coach, Rube Walker, is on his way to the mound. New York in front, 3-0, three, three runs on four hits. Veteran reliever Ted Abernathy has been warming up in the bullpen, and he's coming in. Holtzman has been knocked down to the box. In the early part of the year, the Mets had a lot of trouble with left-hand pitching. But over the last two months, when they have played so sensationally, they have done well against them. They've won nine of their last 12 decisions against softball pitching. Ted Abernathy will be making his 36th appearance of the year, as you can imagine. 36 and a half a season. Abernathy has won four and lost one. The Mets have already seen Abernathy five times this year. In the five outings against the Mets, he has neither won nor lost. And the uh, veteran right-hander has a lifetime mark against New York of two wins and no losses. Abernathy has an ERA of 2.9. In 49 innings, has allowed 43 hits. He has given up only three home runs all year. As a matter of saves, Abernathy has three to his credit. Bill Regan leads the cover at his score with seven. So Ken Holtzman has been knocked out of the box. Two hard hit balls by Grody and White were not handled by the Cub infield, which opened the gates for the New York Mets. And Tom Seaver and Tommy Agee quickly cashed in the opportunity with base hits. At the moment, in one and one third, Holtzman has allowed three runs, four hits. He walked none and struck out two. And now Leo has brought in his submarine right-hander, Ted Abernathy. Cubs have a very strong bullpen. Abernathy has been in 34 ball games, and Phil Regan has been in 38. For the New York Mets, Ron Taylor has appeared in 33. Ron has been in the most games for the Mets. Cal Kuntz has been in 25. Perhaps if you joined us late, the Mets got a run in the first inning. Tommy Agee hit Holtzman's first pitch, a line drive down the right field line to three base hit. And Bobby File hit a hard grounder right over third down the left field line, a double, bringing the run home. Now here in the second after Swoboda hit a hard line drive to left center that was caught. Brody hit a hard grounder to third. But Ron Sano could not come up with. He was charged with an error. Weiss hit a smash at the feet of Kessinger that got through him. The receiver singled to run in, and A.G. just missed a home run and doubled to run in. Now we're ready. Bobby File, the batter. And a ground ball hits the third. Sano will hold the runner. And he throws to first in time for the out. So Bobby File is thrown out on one pitch. That's what dearly love to pick up the two men in scoring position. The batter is Leon John. Abernathy. Very difficult on right-hand hitters with that unorthodox submarine delivery of his. It's no picnic for a left-hand hitter, but a left-hander can see the way the ball is coming in much better than a right-hand. They're going to put Cleon on first base and pitch to Clendon. First base is open, and Jones, the league's leading batter, will get an intentional walk. This will load the bases and bring up Don Clendon. And 
and there's ball four served outside intentionally. The bases are loaded, and Don Glendon comes up. Tom Seaver is on third. Tommy Agee on second. Leon Jones on first. Glendon and 0 for 1. Scott Hills the batter around, now waiting on Abernathy. And the pitch on the way. Off the outside corner. I beg your pardon, on the outside corner, strike one. The fellow Kudus is umpiring the plate. He drives you out of your mind. He waits for a 30 seconds to come past before he calls. Now the pitch on the way. And we wait, and finally the right hand comes up, and it's strike two. So Abernathy with a two-strike count on Don Clinton. The base is loaded as the tall right-hander pitches. Yeah, this one's way outside. We don't have to wait for Fella on that one. One ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes to Don Glendonan. The infield and the outfield straight away. And a breaking ball off the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Yes, Charles, dealing in the on-deck circle. Two runs are in on two hits, aided by two errors. And the Mets lead 3-0 in the second. Abernathy with his stand from Randy Hundley. Pitches 2-2. Two two. Ball 3 is just missed outside, 3-2. And, and you can hear the roar go up here in Shea Stadium before the standing room crowd. Abernathy will work off the stretch to keep the runners close. Three and two, two men down, Clendenin facing Abernathy. And the stretch. And the pitch on the way. Slow ground ball hit back in front of the plate, grabbed by Hundley. And the throw to first is in time to side to side. Little squib hit right out in front of the plate, bounced on by Randy Hundley. Two runs, two hits, two errors, three left. Now, at the end of two, the New York Mets three. And the Chicago Cubs nothing. Can you imagine a beer without a head? It's like an egg without a yolk. Bread without the crust. It's like pizza with no cheese. Beer is meant to have a head. And Rheingold is a beer that's meant to keep it. Rheingold Extra Dry is a beer with a 10-minute head. And when the head's still there, so is all the lively beer flavor. Flavor that's made Rheingold the Extra Dry Lager beer since 1837. The proud Rheingold 10-Minute Head is your sign that this beer is made of the finest ingredients. This beer is truly a great one. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. And for Rheingold, whenever you find beer. Haven't you timed it yet? Rheingold Breweries, New York and Orange, New Jersey. The third inning here at Jay Stadium, the second game of the big three-game series. Chicago coming up against Tom Seaver and coming up to tell you all about it, Ralph Kainer. Thank you, Bob Murphy, and hi, everyone. First batter for the Cubs will be Randy Huntley, the catcher. Randy saving a run with a great backhand catch of a very wide pitch by Ted Abernathy as he came in to get the side out. <laughs> and the first pitch by Seaver is outside ball one. Hudley batting 291, 13 home runs, 42 runs batted in, and he fouls the next delivery. It's one and one. 
Seaver has struck out five of the six men he has retired in his first two innings. Striking out the side in the second. He now has struck out 118 in 143 innings. Last year, Tom striking out over 200 batters. A curveball drilled to left center field. Going over Cleon Jones, he'll get to it. He makes the catch. Leon Jones with a long running catch for the first out here in the top of the third. The Mets leading 3 0 on runs in the first and two in the second. That'll bring up the center fielder, Jimmy Qualls, the left hand batter. Jim batting 244, no home runs, four runs batted in in 17 ball games. That's playing shallow and straight away. Beaver looking for the sign. Now into the windup and the first pitch to Jimmy Qualls. Low and inside, a fastball missing ball one. Beaver's strikeouts, all five have been on fastball. And the 1 0 pitch. It is hit to right field. Ron Travolta back on the warning track on the edge of it. He's waiting and he makes the catch. up and two away and it brings up Ted Abernathy the pitcher. <laughs> Abernathy who relieved Ken Holtzman the starting pitcher now batting for the first time and the first pitch to the right hand batter a fastball on through a call strike. Abernathy has been up five times with two hits, so he has a 400 batting average. Now a pitch for a ball, it's one and one. One ball, one strike. Seaver into the windup and the pitch back. It is a fastball, but low on the count, two balls and one strike. The Mets leading three to nothing with two men out. Top of the third. Next pitch is swung on and fouled back. A hard swing by Abernathy. Two and two. He was trying to hit it out. Signs around the ballpark. Moving Mets. Weiss, A.G. and Martin. Now it's two two. The pitch is swung on and missed strike three. And Tom Seaver with a blazing fastball. Strikes out Ted Abernathy on a check swing. His sixth strikeout in three innings. He has struck out six of the nine batters he has retired. And the score at the end of two and a half innings of Mets three. The cup, nothing. The finest in Italian cuisine and a wide array of steaks, chops, and seafood await your dining pleasure at Mangino's Restaurant, located in the south end of Saratoga Lake. But there's a big difference between just ordinary Italian or American cuisine and Mangino's fine foods. At Mangino's, your order is never prepared hours before. Mangino's realize that good food cannot be hurried, and they ask you to give them a little time to prepare it properly. All dishes are prepared to your order when your order is placed, never simmering away for hours or minutes in the kitchen. And that's the big difference at Mangino's. Why not enjoy eating Italian food the way it should be savored? And done at Mangino's Restaurant, located in the south end of Sir. Saratoga Lake at Route 9P, just two miles from Route 9. A complete line of Italian specialties are served to tempt the palate, and their steaks and chops and seafood are equally as delightful. If you're planning a banquet or party for up to 75 people, call Mangino's for their special party menu. They'll be happy to give you complete details. That's Mangino's Restaurant, the home of truly fine foods, Route 9P, the south end of Saratoga Lake. We're going to the bottom of the third. The Mets leading three to nothing, and we pause now for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. This is New York Mets Baseball from 102.3 on your FM dial in Saratoga Springs, New York, WKAJ. And are along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Shea Stadium. And the first batter for the Mets in the third is Ed Charles, and the first pitch is inside ball one. Ed flight out to center field is one time up. It was against Ken Holtzman, the starting pitcher. Now pitching for the Cubs, Ted Abernathy. And the Submariner back, and the pitcher swung on and missed. One and one. 
Charles batting 197. Two home runs, 12 runs batted in. Abernathy tough on right-hand batters, and the lean left-hander comes back in a wild swing for strike two. Abernathy's fastball breaks down from the underhand motion. The rotation almost as though it were like a curveball, but it breaks straight down. His curveball breaks up. Now at 1-2, the pitch, curveball popped up. Coming in is Glenn Becker, the second baseman, that makes a call on the edge of the infield grass, and he makes the catch. So Ed Charles, the only man not to bat in the second, is out for the first out in the third, and it brings up Ron Svoboda. Ron lined the center field his first time up. Good play in the ball by the center fielder, Jim Qualls. Svoboda batting 221 with three home runs and 18 runs batted in. And he looks at the curve that's in for a call strike. That's leading 3-0. They have three runs on four hits. The Cubs have no runs and no hits. One man out, bottom of the third. Pitch back is taken over for a call strike two. Abernathy with that sinking type fastball picking up the second strike. And the windup and two strike pitch. High and one and two. Ron playing in his 50th ball game this year. Right hand batter. And the one two pitch. It is hit in the air out toward the second base side. Beckert back battling now under the ball in shallow right. And he makes the catch. Two men out. That'll bring up Jerry Grody. Jerry reached on a smash to third his first time up that Ron Sano couldn't handle. It was scored in there. He later on scored. The Mets' second run of the game. They got a run in the first on a triple by Tommy A.G. and a double by Bobby File. And the first pitch is in over the inside corner. A call strike. In the second, Brody was safe from the air by, by the third baseman Sano. Got the second on an air by Don Kettinger on a smash by Al White. There's a drive, but Powell in the stand. Brody out in front, it's strike two. With runners at first and second on the airs in the second inning, Tom Seaver singled the right field to drive in the second run. On the play, Al White went to third, and then Tommy Agee got his second extra base hit when he doubled off the wall in right field to drive in Al White from third base. Now a pitch way outside the count one and two. The accounting for the Mets run. Here are two men out, bottom half of the third. Brody batting 232. One home run, 22 runs batted in. And Abernathy's next pitch is hit down to the second baseman, Beckert. He has an easy play. He throws to first base after fielding the ball. And that retires the side. One, two, three for Ted Abernathy. And the score at the end of three, the Mets three, the Cubs nothing. How did you make out this past winter? Did it cost you more than you had expected to keep warm this season? If it did, it might have been one of two things that proved costly for you. One, every fuel oil is not the same, and clean, fast-burning fuel oil is important to you, not only for the maximum heat, but for the best efficiency of your heating system. And two, perhaps your furnace or heating system needs cleaning. The Adirondack Oil Service on Maple Avenue can help you with both of those problems. First, when you call on the Adirondack Oil Service, you'll receive prompt service from their radio dispatch trucks, and they will deliver the finest fuel oil that money can buy. And if a dirty burner is your problem, Adirondack Oil Service can handle that problem, too. Now is the ideal time to have your burner cleaned and adjusted so that your heating system will operate at its maximum efficiency and economy next season. Don't wait until you need your furnace operating full-time. Call the Adirondack Oil Service on Maple Avenue in Saratoga now at 584-2045. We're going to the top of the fourth, and Don Kessinger, the shortstop and leadoff batter for the Cubs, batting for the second time. First time up, Kessinger was struck out in a 2-2 fastball by Tom Seaver. Seaver has struck out six in the first three innings. And the first pitch by the right-hander is swung on and foul back, strike one. Kessinger batting 294. He has two home runs and 39 runs batted in. 
He has a nine-game hitting streak going to this ball game. And he's batting left-handed against the right-hander, Seaver. One strike pitch. Curveball swung on and fouled down in the dirt. Strike two. Going to the bottom of the 10th inning. Montreal three, Pittsburgh three. In that ball game, Montreal tied it up in the top of the eighth. Braddock still pitching for Montreal. He came in in the eighth inning. Joe Gibbons still in for Pittsburgh. He came in in the eighth inning. Staub got a home run his tenth in the fourth with no one on. Two strike pitches swung on and fouled back into the stand. So the count remains at strike two. That game at Pittsburgh, a scheduled first game of a twi-night doubleheader. Philadelphia beat St. Louis 7-1 in the first game of a twi-night doubleheader in Philly. Two strike pitch again, and the curveball is grounded foul. In that Philadelphia win, the winning pitcher was Woody Fryman, the seven hitter. He went all the way to win his eighth game. He's lost five. The losing pitcher, Nelson Browles, his record now is seven and eight. Briggs got a home run in the first with no one on his sixth of the year. In the second ball game, going for the Cardinals, Dave Justy, and pitching for Philadelphia Palmer. Two strike pitch outside. It's one and two. San Francisco beat Houston 10-3. to The winning pitcher, Ron Bryan, in relief. The losing pitcher was LaMaster, the starter. Morgan, Berta, and Dietz at home run. Now the 1-2 pitch. A curveball. Look at Strike three call. Beautiful curve by Tom Seaver, and that's his seventh strike out of the game. <laughs> That'll bring up Glenn Becker to fly out the right field on a 2-1 pitch his first time up. For the best products and service on the road, make Sitco your gas station. It's a nice place to visit. First pitch to the right-hand batter, a breaking pitch outside, ball one. Beckert with an average of 3.02, no home runs, and 15 runs batted in. Pitch back, a fastball over, a called strike. One ball, one strike. Mets are leading, 3-0, one away, top of the fourth. And the next delivery outside, it's two balls and one strike. In the American League, the Yankees got three in the top of the third. They lead Baltimore now after three, three to two. Monson going for the Yankees against McNally. 2-1 pitch is grounded off the handle down to third. Ed Charles comes up with the ball, and the throw to first base gives the Mets their second out in the top of the fourth. That'll bring up Billy Williams. Billy struck out his first time up. He went down swinging on a fastball. Detroit beat Boston 6-5. The winning pitcher was starter Pat Dobson, the loser Lee Stang. Dostremski got his 24th home run in the seventh with no one on. Washington 3, Cleveland nothing after 4. Bizarro now pitching for Cleveland. Coleman going for Washington. First pitch to Williams is hit foul back on top of the deck above the radio booth. It's strike one. At the end of one, Oakland nothing, Chicago nothing. Chep. Dobson going for Oakland. Billy Wynn going for the White Sox. Starting pitchers, Kansas City at Minnesota. Roger Nelson against Jim Perry. And at one strike, the pitch to Williams has popped up in foul territory. The ball going into the stands in the first base side, strike two. California scheduled for two at Seattle. Starting pitchers in the first game, Clyde Wright against Brett Talbot. Right here, the Mets lead 3 0. Two men out in the top of the fourth. Two strike count on Billy Williams and Seaver now back, and the curveball is fouled back of home plate. And the ball going out of play. About five rolls in. Jerry Grody making a good try to get to it. He gets a hand as he goes back to his catcher's position. So the count remains. It's strike two on Billy Williams. Williams this year batting at a 293 clip. He has nine home runs, 47 runs batted in. And again, Seaver with his two strike pitch. And the fastball hit down the third. Ed Charles picks up the second half and throws the first base for the out, and he tires the side. Billy Williams on that pitch, Tommy Hawk the ball. Just sort of like with a club and grounded it down the third. He was badly fooled with it. So the side retired in order. 
12 in a row for Tom Seaver. And the score at the end of three and a half innings, the Mets three, the Cubs nothing. Many people, when they reach 65, would like to slow down a little, but not necessarily to retire completely. Well, you do not have to retire completely to get Social Security benefits. You can earn as much as $1,680 in a year and still get a Social Security check every month. You can earn a good deal more than $1,680 in a year and still get part of the benefits, depending on how much more you earn. And here's an important point. No matter how much money you earn during the year, you can get a benefit check for any month in which you earn no more than $140. You've just heard a lot of figures. $1,680 in a year, $140 in a month, age 65. Don't be confused. If you have any questions at all about retirement, earnings, and Social Security benefits, get in touch with your Social Security office. The people there will be glad to answer your questions and help you apply for benefits. Fourth inning, the Mets leading three to nothing, and will be Al White. Al smashed one off the glove of the shortstop Don Kessinger, his first time up in the game. It was scored an error, but later on he scored. He's now batting for the first time against Ted Abernathy, who came in the game in relief for Ken Holtzman, and the first pitch is over the outside corner, strike one. That pitch about letter high. Abernathy's fastball sinks because of the underhand motion. Now the one strike pitch. It has popped into shallow center field. Going back is Becker coming in the right fielder is Spangler, and Spangler makes the call and a one-handed catch. So Weiss is out for the first out in the bottom of the fourth. It brings up Tom Seaver. Seaver drove in a run his first time up with a single to right field to score Jerry Grody from second base. For Tom, it was his third run batted in of the year, his fifth base hit. He has been up 45 times. And the first pitch is outside the ball. Seaver, a right-hand batter, being played straight away and very shallow in right and center. The 1-0 pitch by the Submariner is swung on and missed. A half swing, 1-1. One and one. Abernathy now back, and the pitch is outside. Two balls and one strike. Abernathy came in the game in the second with one away. He has retired every batter that he has intentionally pitched to. He did walk Leon Jones on purpose in the second. The 2-1 pitch is right foul down the right field side. Two balls, two strikes. Have a final on the Montreal Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh game. Pittsburgh scored a run in the bottom of the tenth to win it four to three. When he pitcher Joe Gibbon, he went from the eighth inning through the end. Losing pitcher was Raddatz. He also going from the eighth to the end, the bitter end. Raddatz now 0 and 1. Gibson 2 and 0. Stop a tenth home, his tenth home run in the fourth with no one on. 2-2 two, two pitches way outside. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes. On deck, Tommy H. And the pitch. Outside, it's ball four. So Abernathy has walked his second man, his first on purpose. The Mets have a runner at first with one away and Tommy H. coming up. He has tripled and doubled in his two times up. Both coming off Ken Holtzman, the starting pitcher. The double knocked Holtzman out of the batter's box. It drove in the Mets' third run. He scored the first. So Tommy Agee has had a big night so far. Agee batting 285 with 37 runs batted in. And the first pitch, outside the ball. Agee's triple and double, both the right field. His double high off the wall in the right field corner. He could have made a three-base hit on it, but the runner in front of him, Tom Seaver, had to hold up to see or not whether or not the ball would be caught. Now again, Seaver's on at first base. And the pitch. 
Swung on and missed. Agee going for a pitch high and away. It's one and one. Agee leads the club in home runs with 12. He is at 74 hits in 72 ball games. Mets are playing their 81st game here tonight. After the completion of this ball game, they will have been halfway through the season. Now the pitch. It is hit in the air to left field, shallow left field. Billy Williams coasting in. Seaver down the line. Now back to first base after the catch. So now two away, and the batter will be Bobby File. File doubled his first time up to drive in the Mets' first run. It was his second run batted into the year. He has played in 10 ball games for the Mets. And his first time up after the double, he batted for his first time against Abernathy. And on one pitch, he grounded out to third with runners at second and third. Now the pitch, and it's grounded out to second this time. Beckert goes to his left, bobbles the ball, and cannot make a play. Moving down to second on the air is Tom Seaver. So the Cubs have made the third air of this game, and the Mets have runners at first and second with two men out, and Cleon Jones coming up. Leon was walked intentionally his second time up and first time against Abernathy. Now with runners at first and second, they'll have to pitch to him. Leon, the National League's leading batter with an average of 351. Nine home runs, 53 runs batted in. And Abernathy in the set position. And the pitch. Outside, a backhand catch by Randy Huntley at ball one. Abernathy going back to the grass and going to the back of his neck for some moisture, rubbing up the ball. One ball, no strike. Leon got the big hit in yesterday's win. He drove in the two runs that tied up the ball game. Now the 1-0 pitch. Again, a backhand catch of a pitch way outside. Two balls, no strike. Two balls, no strikes. Two men out. The Mets leading 3-0. They have runners at first and second. Bottom half of the fourth inning. Now Abernathy with the sign. The stretch and the pitch. It is swung on and missed. Two and one. Seaver at second base. Bobby Fowle at first. Now they move up. And the 2-1 delivery. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Ed Abernathy coming back to pick up two swinging strikes. And that evens the count of two balls and two strikes. Leon has had 100 base hits this year. He has scored 58 runs. Has played in 79 ball games. Now he spares himself in the batter's box. Abernathy peers in for the sign. Still looking and taking too much time and Cleon steps out of the batter's box. So the battle between the pitcher and the hitter goes on. Leon back in. Abernathy now goes to the set position. And the pitch. It is swung on a miss, strike three. And Ted Abernathy picks up a strikeout, his first in the ball game, And it was a big one, leaving runners on. No runs, no hits, one error walk, and two men left on. And the score at the end of four. The Mets three, the Cubs nothing. Whether you're looking for a hot or a cold sandwich or a complete dinner, make Pinellas Restaurant on Jefferson Street your headquarters for the finest in Italian or American dishes. At Pinellas, food and cocktails are served daily from 5 p.m. on. They're closed on Sundays. Choose from Pinellas' wide selection on their dinner menu, and they always have those famous steak sandwiches. 
Many people in the area find Pinell's restaurant the ideal stopping off place after the races. It's just 400 yards from the new grandstand entrance on Jefferson Street. Each day, Pinell's restaurant has a different special. And Pinell's is the type of place where you can just relax in their informal atmosphere. Reservations are not necessary, and there's always plenty of free parking. Italian or American dishes, choose your favorite and enjoy the wonderful cuisine at Pinell's Restaurant, Jefferson Street, Saratoga Springs. Why not stop by at Pinell's Restaurant tonight? Well, here we go. Inning number five, New York three runs, four hits and no errors. Chicago, no runs, no hits and three errors. And Ron Sano will lead off against Tom Seaver in the top of the fifth inning. Ron Sano was struck out his first time up. The number one run producer in the National League, the captain of the Chicago Cubs, Ron Sano. You'll recall, he got away to a very slow start this year. He was hitting down around 220 the first six weeks. Then according to Ron, he gave up on going for a home run, merely tried to meet the ball, hit it back through the middle. He brought his average up to 300. High foul ball, black back into the crowd, no play. Tremendous crowd tonight at Shea, even larger than yesterday. Than yesterday, there were over 55,000. Slider outside and low, one ball, one strike. For the Chicago Cubs, Berlin Walker coaching in third, and on the lines at first, Joe Malfitano. The 1 1 delivery, long fly ball deep to center. Back goes A.G., he's under it, and he has it. Four hundred and eight feet from home plate. Tommy Agee pulled in the long fly hit by Ron Sato. Had that ball been pulled any at all, it would have gone. It was hit in a dead line with a 4-10 mark, the deepest point in the ballpark. Now Ernie Banks up against Fever and the curve outside ball one. Now Fever has already expended a great deal of energy in this ball game. Twice he has been on base. And he has seven strikeouts. Ground ball hit toward the middle, running for it. Al Weiss, he catches up with it. Throws the first two down. Two outs and nobody on. Wide range on the part of Al Weiss. He went almost behind second to throw out Ernie Banks. Now Al Spangler, the right fielder. Spangler hitting 244. Was struck out his first time at bat. Spangler, a 10-year veteran, originally started out with the Braves. He's a full hitter, the infield and the outfield, shades around to right. Fouled down the left field line, going out of play. That's tonight trying to win their seventh consecutive ball game. Here's the pitch on the way. Curve in the dirt, one ball and one strike. That's won their last two in St. Louis. They swept three in Pittsburgh, and they won yesterday afternoon. Now the 1-1 delivery. Swing and a miss on a fastball, one and two. New York in front, 3 nothing. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Randy Hundley is the on-deck batter. Pitching, one and two. Struck him out. Number eight for Tom Fever. Tom has now retired 15 consecutive Cub batters. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. So we've come halfway. The end of four and one half innings, the New York Mets three and the Chicago Cubs nothing. In a nuclear war, millions of lives would depend on immediate and essential information from government. That's why the emergency broadcast system was developed. It provides the president and the federal government, as well as your state and local authorities, with a means of quick communications with the general public. In event of an attack, 
normal radio and television programming will immediately be discontinued, and only designated emergency broadcast stations will continue in operation. At that time, you would be instructed to tune to one of your area radio stations for official information and civil defense instructions. The emergency broadcast station serving your vicinity would easily be found by simply dialing around on your standard radio band. For while there would be no broadcast of station call letters during an emergency, repeated area identifications would be given with emergency information and civil defense instructions for your particular area. An afternoon game tomorrow. Gary Gentry will pitch against Bill Hens. We'll be on with our radio and television coverage at 2 p.m. And a grounder bounced slowly toward the middle, fielded by Glenn Becker. His bad arm throw to Banks is in time, getting Glenn done and one man down. Now Ed Charles coming up. Ed has slide to center and popped to second, nothing for two. Ron Sloboda, the on deck hitter. And a drive, well hit the left center, cutting forward as the center fielder falls, and he makes a spectacular catch. Beautiful fielding play by Jimmy Qualls to cut center fielder. He gets a big hand from the Pac Shea Stadium crowd. He robbed Charles of a base hit. Running full speed in the left center at the last moment, he stretched out and made a backhand catch just before the ball hit the dirt. Buddy <laughs> on, Ron Sloboda facing Ted Abernathy. Swing and a missed strike one. Jimmy Qualls, an infielder by trade, is being made into an outfielder. Boy, he's learning his trade in a hurry. Abernathy picking up his sign from Huntley. And the pitch to run. Ground ball hit hard into right field of base hit. Bangler up with the ball. Whips the ball into first base. Base. Abernathy came over and took the throw from Spangler. And Svoboda just got back to the bag. Two out single to right field by Ron Svoboda. Ron has hit the ball hard twice and three times at bat. Now Jerry Grody coming up. And that is the first base hit off Abernathy since he came in to relieve Ken Holtzman in the second. Let's now have three runs on five hits. Chicago, no runs on no hits. Last half of the fifth inning. And the pitch on the way. The runner goes and is fouled. And it hits umpire Chris Bellacuti. Chris Bellacutis was hit in the leg by the foul ball off Jody's bat. The Mets were playing hit and run. Doug Harvey and Shag Crawford come from first and third to see if they can be of any help, see if he can offer a hand. Well, while they're attending to Bellacutis, we'll pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're listening to New York Mets Baseball on WKAJ-FM, 102.3 megacycles on your FM dial in Saratoga Springs, New York. ...with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kainer, last of the fifth inning, the play resumes. Ron Swoboda on first, two down, Grody the batter. Pitch by Abernathy, a fly ball hit the right field. Al Spangler angling back, settles under it, and he takes it for the on. That's retired in their half of the fifth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. At the end of five, the New York Mets three, but the Chicago Cubs nothing. Hi, this is Bob Walton at Walton Sport Shop, urging you to stop in and see us when you need camping equipment. Now that vacation time is here, have you found that in checking over your equipment that you need something additional? Then stop in and see the wide selection we have to offer. Walton's carries pack frames, canteens, and mess kits. If this is your first year of tenting, then be sure that you see Walton's for all styles of tents, air mattresses, and Coleman stoves and lanterns. Walton's carries a full line of famous name sleeping bags. 
Of course, at Walton's, hunters can find everything in one convenient location. Guns, ammunition, and hand-loading equipment and rifle scopes to make those long shots surer and safer. For the golfers, be sure to visit Walton's par three room where you'll find a complete line of golf equipment. Shoes, clubs, bags, carts, and a rainproof jacket for just $9.95. A complete line of equipment for all sports is what you'll find at Walton Sports Shop, Lake Avenue in Saratoga, where sportsmen cater to sportsmen. In the sixth inning here at Shea Stadium, the Chicago Cubs will have Randy Hundley, Jimmy Qualls, and Ted Aberdathy scheduled up. And out of the Chicago Cubs Cup bullpen, ace fireman Phil Regan is now warming up. Randy Hundley leading off. Randy Hundley fly to left in his previous time at bat. Fever out of his windup. Here's the pitch. Slow ground ball. Moving in quickly is Charles. He snags it. Throws. One out. So on one pitch, Randy Hundley retired. He will bring up the rookie center fielder, Jimmy Qual. Q-U-A-L-L-S. From Tulare, California. Walls, a switch hitter, was in spring training with the Cubs and then optioned out to Tacoma. In the last of the fifth inning, Baltimore's book Powell has homered. With the Orioles at bat in the fifth inning, Yankees four, Orioles three. Fouled, no play. Both Book Powell and Frank Robinson will be on the uh, American League All Star team. The American League All Star infield will have Book Powell at first, Rod Carew at second, Rico Petroselli is short, and Foul Bando at third. Ground ball hammered down to first, and then enough with it. Makes the play unassisted, two men down. Now Abernathy is scheduled up, and with two outs and the base is empty, he will hit. At Chicago, mounted a threat. Leo indicated he was ready to go to a pinch hitter. Bill Freen of Detroit is the American League All-Star catcher. He'll have a lot of power in that outfield with Reggie Jackson of Oakland, Frank Howard of Washington, and Frank Robinson of Baltimore. Pitch to Abernathy, a swing and a miss strike one. One ball, one strike. Abernathy was struck out his previous time at bat. You know, the loans are larger at Household Finance. Now borrow up to $1,400 at any HFC office in New York. Swing and a miss. I said Abernathy, one ball, two strikes. We're in the top of the sixth inning, New York leading Chicago, 3-0. Tom Seaver with a count of one and two. In comes the pitch. Check swing and a foul ball back up into the crowd. Don Kessinger, the leadoff batter and switch hitting shortstop, is the on deck hitter. Now Brody setting up the target. Slow curve, straight three call. That retires the side. Beautiful curveball by Tom Seaver. His ninth strikeout in the sixth inning. And Seaver now has retired 18 consecutive hitters. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left off. At the end of five and one half inning, the New York Mets three and the Chicago Cubs nothing. You know, unfair housing isn't unfair. It's illegal. This is Chico Hamilton. If anybody has refused to rent or sell you a house or an apartment because you were black, yellow, Puerto Rican, Jewish, or whatever, they're breaking the law. 
That is, they're breaking the Fair Housing Law of 1968. What you can do is write to Fair Housing, Washington, D.C., zip code 20410, and complain, and they'll do something. When the law says anybody can live anywhere, the law means exactly that. Anywhere, baby. I mean, but anywhere. So, write to Fair Housing, Washington, D.C., zip code 20410. Two 
outs and nobody on. Let's lead three runs, five hits, no errors. Chicago, no runs, no hits, and three errors. And the pitch by Abernathy. Far off the outside corner, two and two to Tommy Yates. Abernathy's batting in the 2-2 delivery, and it's a high pop-up into short left field. Billy Williams, the Cub left fielder, is under it waiting, and he has it that retires the side. So Abernathy has been very strong in relief in four and two-thirds, no runs, one hit. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left in the bottom half of the sixth inning. At the end of six, the New York Mets three and the Chicago Cubs seven. George, our tail lights are still out. All right, Eloise, you don't have to remind me every half mile. Believe me, honey, nobody's car has all its lights working. That's not true, George. Eloise, Harry Cosgrove has a headlight out. Specialty cars located on Ridge Road, Northville, on Sacandaga Reservoir, invite you to take off in a Dearborn deserter sport buggy. You've seen them on TV, the go-anywhere buggy that's a boon to hunters, fishermen, outdoorsmen, and summer fun people. John Coffin of Specialty Cars invites you to call him at 925-8513, and he'll give you all the details on the Dearborn Deserter Sport Buggy, built from the ground up at Specialty Cars' own shop. The Dearborn Deserter Buggy takes you places others just can't get, through sand, gravel, and over the roughest terrain. The buggy can be fully enclosed and has a built-in heater for chilly days. Call Specialty Cars at Northville, 925-8513. Specialty Cars says we can turn your beetle into a buggy. Get in the swing for summertime fun. Call Specialty Cars at Northville, 925-8513. Specialty Cars, Ridge Road, Northville on Sacandaga Reservoir. Custom builders of the Dearborn Deserter Sport Buggies. By a score of three to nothing, Jerry Goody sends out a sign. Seavers into the motion. Here is the pitch. It's foul back off the screen for strike one. Glenn Beckert is on deck. It's top of the batting order up here for the Chicago Cubs in the seventh inning. The Mets three runs, five hits, no errors. The Cubs no runs, no hits, three errors. Here's Seavers' pitch. High for a ball. It's one and one. Seaver has struck out nine, and he has walked none in this ball game so far. Here's the pitch. Curveball. It's hit in the air to left. Cleon Jones coming over. Makes the catch for the out. A line drive to Cleon Jones' glove side. He moves toward the line and hauled it down. Seaver has retired 19 consecutive batters from the start of the ball game. Glenn Beckert. As Lyon to right and grounded out third to first. He is a tough man to strike out. Here is the pitch. High and away for a ball. He has struck out only seven times this year, and he's been up 233 times. 233 times his bat, he has been struck out only seven times. It's a swing and a fly ball on the right, and Svoboda moves up, and he's there, and he makes the catch. Two away. Seaver has retired 20 consecutive batters since the start of the ball game. Billy Williams up now. He has struck out and he's grounded out third to first. Seaver takes the side from Grody. The pitch to the left-hand batter. Swung on and missed his strike one. Took a rip at the fastball, a high hard one. Two men out, nobody on base. Now again, Sieber into the motion. Pitch is high and away. One and one to Billy Williams. This is a 1-1 offering. Curveball, it hits in the dirt and rolls on back. Nolan Ryan is 
loosening up his arm in the Met bullpen, just doing a little work down here. Nolan Ryan down in the Met bullpen. Now here's the 2-1 pitch. Swung on, have it on the ground to third. A big hop to his Charles. Up he has it to throw the first in time. The side is out and Seaver has retired 21 consecutive batters. The Chicago Cubs have not had a base runner. The hand is for Seaver, who has pitched seven perfect innings. He's getting a standing ovation. It's no run, no hits, no errors, and none left. In the middle of the seventh inning, the score is the Mets three and the Cubs nothing. Now here's a way for great Mets fans to get the recognition they deserve. Oh, not today. Now, dear, I've gone to every Met home game since the beginning. Why should this Sunday be different? Because this Sunday your only daughter is getting married. So we have the reception at the park. His family sits on the first base side, ours behind third. Wrangle, looking for the 25 greatest Mets fans in the world. The kind who'd even have their own daughter's wedding reception during a Sunday twin bill at Shea. Maybe you know somebody like that. Or maybe it's you. Drop us a line and tell us about it. 25 all-star Mets fans will be selected and honored at Shea on August 22nd. There'll be plaques for the winners, portable TVs, an appearance on the field, a Diamond Club dinner, and two box seats for the next five home openers. Entries must be postmarked by midnight July 31st. This contest is open to residents of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut who are 21 years old or over. Letters will be judged on originality, aptness, and interest. Hurry. Send your nominating letter to Rheingold Greatest Met Fan Contest, Box 289, New York 10046. Orange, New Jersey. Now the New York Mets are coming up in the bottom half of the seventh inning, and Bobby File is at the plate. Here's a pitch that is high for a ball. It's 1-0. Ted Abernathy into the motion, and the pitch swung on, and it in the air to left field. Billy Williams is moving back now, and he makes the catch. So there's one away, and it'll be Cleon Jones coming up. Jones has been called out on strike, walked intentionally, and struck out swinging here tonight. Up here in the bottom of the seventh with one man out and nobody on base. And the pitch is in there for a call strike. And Abernathy into the motion, and the breaking pitch is inside high. It's one and one. Abernathy, a submarine pitcher. He came on in relief after starter Kenny Holtzman worked one and a third. Here's a check swing foul ball, so it goes to one and two. Jones outside the batter's box, moves back in now. Here's a 1-2 delivery. Curveball, hit deep to left field. It's way back there, and it's going, going, and it's gone. A home run for Cleon Jones. Season and the Mets are out in front by a score of four to nothing. The ball sailed over the left field fence into the Chicago bullpen at the 358 foot side. Nobody on, one man out, and Don Clendenon is up. Here's a swing and a miss at strike one. That is low for a ball, it's one and one. Now 
Mets are batting here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Outside for a ball. A chat of let's go Mets. One of the big crowds in the history of this stadium on hand here tonight. And they've had a riotous evening of excitement. The Mets are leading by a score of four to nothing. Tom Seaver has been great. Here's a swing and a ground ball to second. Taken by Beckert. He plays on the backs in time. So there are two men out. And Ed Charles is coming up. Slide to center, pop to second, and slide to center. Here's a swing and a ground ball back at third. Taken by Eddie Yost. Down into the dirt out of play, and they count two strikes. Ron Swoboda is waiting on deck with the Mets batting here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. There is excitement of plenty here at Shea Stadium this night. Here's a two-strike delivery, curveball, submarined outside. One and two to Ed Charles. Leon Jones having belted his 10th home run of the season over the left field fence here in this seventh inning. Put the Mets out in front by a score of four to nothing. Chicago Cubs have been shut out only twice this year. Here's a swing and a foul ball back and out of play. It's one and two. Charles staying right in the batter's box. Abernathy goes briefly to the rosin bag, fingers it. Now it sets up to look for a sign from Randy Huntley. Here is the 1-2 offering. Swung on and fouled off to the right side. It's out of play. So the count goes to 1-2. and two. again takes his sign. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on and foul back. Count continues. One and two. Now the one-two delivery. Hammered on the ground down the left field line. A fair ball. Could be extra bases. Billy Williams able to play the ricochet off the stand, plays it back, and Charles is in standing with a double. He drilled that one on the ground between third baseman Ron Santo and the bag. Down the left field line, it curved over off the facing of the lower field boxes, rebounded to Billy Williams, who played it into second, but not in time for the double. So now it's Swoboda up, two men out in the runner at second. The base hit number seven for the New York Mets. Swoboda is one for three. He singled a right in the fifth inning of this game. Off Seaver, the Chicago Cubs have not had a base runner tonight. Ed Abernathy sets up. Here is the pitch. And it is low and dropped by Huntley. It's fallen. The vulture, Phil Regan, is up and throwing now. Phil Regan is up and throwing in the bullpen. For the Chicago Cubs. Abernathy peers in. Here's the 1-0 delivery. Swung on and hit in the air to short right field. Spangler is coming in. He gets there. He's underneath. He makes the catch. So the side is out as the Mets picked up a run on two hits. No errors. And one man left. And at the end of seven full innings of play, the score is... The Mets four, and the Cubs nothing. 
The finest in Italian cuisine and a wide array of steaks, chops, and seafood await your dining pleasure at Mangino's Restaurant, located in the south end of Saratoga Lake. But there's a big difference between just ordinary Italian or American cuisine and Mangino's fine foods. At Mangino's, your order is never prepared hours before. Mangino's realize that good food cannot be heard and they ask you to give them a little time to prepare it properly. All dishes are prepared to your order when your order is placed, never simmering away for hours or minutes in the kitchen. And that's the big difference at Mangino's. Why not enjoy eating Italian food the way it should be savored? And dine at Mangino's Restaurant, located in the south end of Saratoga Lake at Route 9P, just two miles from Route 9. A complete line of Italian specialties are served to tempt the palate, and their steaks and chops and seafood are equally as delightful. If you're planning a banquet or party for up to 75 people, call Mangino's for their special party menu. They'll be happy to give you complete details. That's Mangino's Restaurant, the home of truly fine foods, Route 9P, the south end of Saratoga Lake. Tom Seaver on the mound for the New York Mets. Through seven innings, he has retired 21 consecutive batters and Ron Santo who leads the National League and runs batted in with 74, is up to lead off. He has struck out and fly to center. Rod Gaspar is coming in right field now in place of Ron Swoboda for the New York Mets. Rod Gaspar, that's a defensive move by manager Gil Hodges. Wayne Garrett comes in at second base now, and Bobby Fowle moves over to third as Charles comes out of the ball game. Here's the pitch to Ron Santo. Swung on it in the air to deep center field. Agee's going back. He has a beat on it. He's there, and he makes the catch. Listen to the crowd riding on every pitch of the ball game now. Riding on every play as Tom Seaver has retired 22 consecutive batters since the start of the ball game. Wayne Garrett is playing second base. Bobby Fowle is playing third. In the history of the Mets, the longest that any Mets pitcher has ever gone without allowing a hit. Seven and one-third innings by Al Jackson in Pittsburgh against the Pirates. Seaver has gone seven and one-third here. The pitch to Ernie Banks is high for a ball. The crowd is humming. Here is the 1-0 pitch now to Ernie Banks. Swung on and missed. It's 1-1. One one. Seaver has struck out nine, and he's walked none in this game tonight. This would be a 1-1 one -one delivery. It's on the way. Curveball. Swung on and missed. Good curveball. One and two now to Ernie Banks. As Seaver faces the heart of the batting order of the Chicago Cubs. Sando opening up with a long fly to center. Banks is at the plate, and Al Spangler's on deck. Here's a one-two pitch. Swung on and foul back. He's still alive at one and two. In the first inning, Kessinger struck out, Beckett lined out, Williams struck out. In the second inning, Sando struck out, Banks struck out, Spangler struck out. In the third, Hundley flied out, Balls flied out, Holtzman struck out. In the fourth, Kessinger struck out, Beckett grounded out, Williams grounded out. In the fifth, Sando fly it out. Banks ground it out, and Spangler struck out. It's a swing and a foul ball back and out of play. In the sixth, Hunley ground it out. Qualls ground it out, and Abernathy struck out. In the seventh, Kessinger lined out. Beckard fly it out. Williams ground it out. Here in the eighth, Sando has fly to center. The count is one and two to Ernie Banks, and Seavers pitches on the way. Curveball misses way outside. Caught in the webbing of the glove by catcher Jerry Grody, who leaned way out. Now it goes to two balls and two strikes now. Here is a 2-2 two -two delivery to Banks. Swung on, foul back, it's out of play in the count, holds it 2-2. Two -two. As 38-year-old Ernie Banks continues to foul that ball off. The Mets lead by a score of four to nothing. Here's the 2-2 two -two pick. Swung out and missed, he's it out. Listen to the crowd. Strikeout number 10 for Tom Seaver. He has retired 23 consecutive batters from the start of the ball game. Left-hand batter Al Spangler is coming up. He's been up twice and he struck out swinging both times. The Cubs are batting in the top half of the eighth inning here at Shea Stadium.
Here's a swing and a miss at strike one. Beaver again takes the side from Jerry Gordy. Two men out and nobody on base. He's into the motion again, and here's the strike one delivery. It's in there for a call strike two. Oh, and two the count now. To Al Spangler. Beaver again takes the side. Here is a two-strike delivery. It's high away for a ball. One and two. Nancy Seaver, Tom White, seated in one of the lower field boxes on the edge of her seat. Riding with every pitch of this ball game. Here's a pitch. Now swing out in this. He struck him out. The side is retired. Seaver has gone through eight innings. He has retired 24 consecutive batters. He has not allowed a hit or a base runner. He's getting a standing ovation. He's gone longer without allowing a hit than any Met pitcher in the history of the New York Mets. That was his 11th strikeout. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left. In the middle of the eighth inning, the score is the Mets four and the Cubs nothing. How did you make out this past winter? Did it cost you more than you had expected to keep warm this season? If it did, it might have been one of two things that proved costly for you. One, every fuel oil is not the same, and clean, fast-burning fuel oil is important to you, not only for the maximum heat, but for the best efficiency of your heating system. And two, perhaps your furnace or heating system needs cleaning. The Adirondack Oil Service on Maple Avenue can help you with both of those problems. First, when you call on the Adirondack Oil Service, you'll receive prompt service from their radio dispatch trucks, and they will deliver the finest fuel oil that money can buy. And if a dirty burner is your problem, Adirondack Oil Service can handle that problem, too. Now is the ideal time to have your burner cleaned and adjusted so that your heating system will operate at its maximum efficiency and economy next season. Don't wait until you need your furnace operating full-time. Call the Adirondack Oil Service on Maple Avenue in Saratoga now at 584-2045. Here are the attendance figures for the night. The total attendance at Shea Stadium tonight, 59,083. 59,083 of which 50,709 is paid. It is a Boyden's promotion night. Now the pitch to Grody, up for the Mets. Then the bottom half of the eighth inning, and it's high for a ball. This stadium is packed, and it's jammed. More than 59,000 fans here tonight. Here's a swing and a ground ball, Hammond to third. Take it by Sanzo. Long throw across the diamond in time. And there's one away. We pause for station identification. You're listening to New York Mets Baseball on WKAJ-FM 102.3 in Saratoga Springs, New York. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Tanner and Bob Murphy at Shea Stadium in New York. The Mets are leading the Cubs by a score of 4 to nothing, batting in the bottom of the 8th. Weiss is up, swings, and sends the ground ball through the hole in the left for a base hit. Billy Williams is up with it, plays it back. Weiss turns and holds with a single to left field. Base hit number eight for the Mets. Here is Tom Seaver coming up. Listen to the hat. A standing ovation. who has not allowed the Cubs a base runner or a base hit through the first eight innings of this ball game. The finest performance by a Met pitcher ever. Listen to the hand. They're still standing. More than 59,000 all around the ballpark. What a moment. Abernathy fish. Seaver bunched the ball. He's out in front of the plate. Second by Abernathy. He'll go to first. To Beckett. It is a sack one more. Seaver back to the dugout with another ovation. the young pitcher's wife do when her husband is giving a standing ovation? She stands and applauds with all the rest of them. Weiss is at second now, and Tommy Agee is up, batting for the Mets in the bottom half of the eighth inning. The Mets, four runs, eight hits, no errors. The Cubs, no runs, no hits, three errors. Ed Abernathy sets up now, works off the stretch. Here is the pitch. And it is low and off the glove of Randy Hunley. He receives it about six feet up the first baseline. Weiss holding at second base. A 
out of Let's Go Mets here at Chase Stadium. Here's a 1-0 pitch. It's in there for a call strike. One and one to Agee. Agee opened up this ball game tonight for the Mets with a triple, and he laid a score. He doubled a drive and a run in the second, high off the wall and right almost a home run. Twice he just slide out to left. He's two for four tonight, up for his fifth time just now. Abernathy off the stretch for the 1-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. It's one and two. Bobby Pyle is waiting on deck. Abernathy throws the rubber. Crowd gets just a little bit silent for a moment. They've been noisy most of the night. They've had a lot to yell about. He'll be yelling on every pitch in the ninth inning of this ball game. Abernathy sets up. Here's the one-two delivery swung on. Hit on the ground to third. Charged by Sanzo. Big hop throws on the run in time. He gets A.G. and the side is out. So it's no runs, a hit, no errors, and one left in the end of eight full innings to play. The score is the Mets four and the Cubs nothing. Coming to the end of your college days, why not make it a happening? The start of something big. In all the world, only a few thousand men have mastered the skies from the deck of a ship at sea. You could be one of them as a naval aviator. If you're going to be something, why not be something special? It's where it's all happening now. something he has never faced before coming to the ninth inning of a ball game in which he is not allowed a base runner and he will be facing Randy Hunley of the Chicago Cubs Seaver came into this game with a record of 13 and 3 he's going for his 14th win but he's going for something bigger than that here tonight Now Chris Bellacudis goes halfway out, tosses the ball on to Seaver, and we're getting ready to go in the top half of the ninth inning. You will hear this crowd react on every pitch of this inning. Randy Hunley has flied to left and grounded out third to first. Seaver has struck out 11, and he's walked none. Here is the pitch. Funny, back to Seaver. Up with it, he goes to first in time. That's one away. Hunley tried to bunt his way on. Seaver came off the mound. Played it back. The booing you hear is for Hunley. Now it'll be Jimmy Qualls coming up. The number eight man in the batting order. He has lined to right and he has grounded out to first base unassisted. Tom Seaver with a world of poise. He has retired 25 consecutive batters. He is not allowed a base runner. Qualls is a switch hitter. Batting left. He looks down to sign man Pearl and Walker at third base. One man out in the ninth. Seaver with a pitch. Swung on and lined in the left. It's going to be in there for a base hit. It is a base hit for Qualls. Taken by Tommy Agee. He plays it back. Qualls turns and holds with a single to left. And there goes the perfect game and the no-hitter. Seaver through eight and one-third innings with one man out in the ninth. Had not allowed a base runner or a base hit. Jimmy Qualls, a man with a 234 batting average, gets the base hit to left center. And now the hand is for Seaver as he walks in. And we're going to have Willie Smith batting for Ted Abernathy. Willie Smith will bat for Ted Abernathy. Tom Seaver went longer than any Met pitcher in history with a no-hit attempt. He went one full inning longer than any Met pitcher in history. With one man out in the ninth, he still had a perfect game going against the Chicago Cubs. The last perfect game pitched in the National League was against the Cubs by Sandy Koufax, September 9, 1965. Seaver sets up now, and here is the pitch. It's high and away for a ball. 
One and oh. Willie Smith batting for Ted Abernathy. Jimmy Quall delivered a solid single into left center. Nothing fluky about it. It was a clean base hit. Now again, Seaver's pitch swung on and fouled off out of play. It's one and one. Jack DeLauro and Cal Kuntz are throwing in the Mets bullpen. Jack DeLauro and Cal Kuntz. Crowd is quieting down now, and here is the pitch to Willie Smith. Swung on and missed it one and two. Up to batting in the top half of the ninth inning, and the Mets are leading by a score of four to nothing. Beaver hands on hips now, steps up on the rubber. This will be a one two delivery. Breaking pitch low, it's two two. And then in playing behind the runner at first is Jimmy Qualls takes his lead there. Here's a 2-2 delivery, and it's swung on and popped up to the left side. Third baseman Bobby Fowl comes over into foul territory. Fowl makes the catch. <laughs> Holding at first is Jimmy Qualls. Two men out, and Don Chessinger is the batter. Storgard swinging, Storgard looking in line to left. In case you haven't heard, Ryan Gold is looking for the 25 greatest Mets fans. Do you think you qualify? Then write a letter to Ryan Gold Greatest Mets Fans Contest, Box 289, New York, New York, 10046. Now, Seaver off the stretch with a pitch to the left hand batter, fouled off. Kessinger, the switch hitter, batting left. Came into this game with a nine game hitting streak. How many one-hitters have been pitched by New York Mets pitchers? Only two in the history of the ball club. Al Jackson had them both. Kessinger has that bat cock now, and here is the pitch. Swung on and missed. It's strike two. Seaver has struck out 11, and he's walked none. Seaver has been overpowering here tonight. On the bench in Pittsburgh, last Sunday I was sitting by Mets pitching coach Rube Walker as Seaver went by. I said, think he's a pretty good pitcher. Walker said, I don't know anywhere in the major leagues there's anybody better. He's pitched that kind of baseball here tonight. Tom Seaver has a two-strike count now. And here is the pitch. Curveball swung on and fouled off. He's still alive with a two-strike count. Jimmy Qualls, the center fielder who is platooned out there with Don Young, is the number eight man in the batting order. He had a 234 average when he delivered the base hit into left center field. There's a swing and a high fly ball into left. Jones is underneath. That should end the ball game with a one hitter for Seaver. It does. The ball game is over. Seaver gets the one hitter. Brody is out to shake his hand. He's a little bit disconsolate. He was making a bid for a perfect game. But he has a one hitter. A tremendous performance. The Chicago Cubs have been shut out previously only twice this year. Seaver shuts him out on a one-hitter. He struck out 11. He walked none. He's getting a standing ovation. He goes to the dugout. The New York Mets have made it two in a row over the Chicago Cubs. The Mets just now are only three games out of first place in the Eastern Division of the National League. We'll be back in a moment with the final summary and total. Right now, the final score of the game is the Mets four, the Cubs nothing. the ingredients that are brewed into Rheingold Extra Dry insist on only the best malt, only the best hops, only the best of everything. You can see what that means in every Rheingold you drink. You can see the proud Rheingold 10-minute head standing as a sure sign of quality. The Rheingold 10-minute head. Haven't you timed it yet? 
Wrangell Breweries, New York and Orange, New Jersey. The New York Mets' most exciting night in their eight-year history before a crowd of 59,083 saw Tom Seaver shut out the Chicago Cubs and make a bid for a perfect game. As it was, he spun a one-hitter. Only two Mets pitchers in all their history had done that before him. Al Jackson had pitched them both. The longest a Mets pitcher had ever gone on a no-hitter was seven and a third. That was Al Jackson, two against the Pirates. Seaver went eight and one-third. He had one man out in the ninth inning when Jimmy Claus delivered a base hit. The Mets started out against the Chicago Cubs left-hander, Kenny Holtzman, boom, boom, here tonight. Tommy Agee triple, Bobby Pyle double, and the Mets had a run. And then in the second inning with one man out, Jerry Grody was on on an error by Ron Santo. Weiss was on on an error by Don Kessinger. Seaver single to right, driving in a run. Tommy Agee doubled high off the wall in right, almost a home run, driving in another, and the Mets had three runs. They got another in the seventh, when off reliever Ted Abernathy, Cleon Jones hit his 10th home run of the year. But as the Mets had taken that early lead, and A.G. was the hitting star with his triple and his double, it was Tom Seaver who was keeping the Chicago Cubs in check. He had it going early. He struck out five of the first six batters that he faced. Overall tonight, he struck out 11 and he walked none. If the pressure was felt on either side, it was by the Chicago Cubs, reputed to have the finest infield in baseball. But Sando booted one, Kessinger booted one, and Beckert booted one. The Mets played errorless baseball, and so Seaver gets his 14th win. Only one other pitcher in the National League is 114, and that's Phil Necro of the Atlanta Braves. Now tomorrow afternoon, it'll be Gary Gentry going for the New York Mets against Bill Hands of the Chicago Cubs. We'll be on the air at 2 p.m. to bring you that one. Gentry has won eight and lost six. Hands has won nine and lost seven. Final totals in the ballgame here tonight. For the New York Mets, four runs on eight hits and no errors. For the Cubs, no runs, only one hit and three errors. Seaver's the winner. He's won 14 and lost three. Holtzman is the loser. He's won 10 and lost five. We'll be back with more about the Mets in just one minute. Hi, this is Greg Morris of Mission Impossible with an important question for young men. Do you know where you're going? Have you considered the Coast Guard? The United States Coast Guard builds well-rounded men, experts in a variety of fields, men with eyes on the future. At the United States Coast Guard Academy, you'll receive the finest education and military training, a Bachelor of Science degree, and the commission in the United States Coast Guard. If you have the ability to take command, the Coast Guard is interested in you. At the Academy, you can concentrate on engineering, management, or oceanography. Your training and education will encompass every facet of the Coast Guard's humanitarian mission. If you have what it takes, take a career in the Coast Guard. For brochure and application form, write to the Director of Admissions, Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut. That's the Director of Admissions, Coast Guard Academy, New London, Connecticut. In the National League standings in the Eastern Division, the New York Mets now are only three games back of the division-leading Chicago Cubs, and in the all-important loss column, the Mets are only one game back of the Cubs. They'll be playing the Cubs tomorrow afternoon, and then after Montreal is in here for a weekend series, the Mets go to Chicago next Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday afternoon. Final score here again tonight, the New York Mets four and the Chicago Cubs nothing. New York Mets Baseball has been a feature presentation of the New York Mets Baseball Network and Rheingold Extra Dry, the beer with a 10-minute head, and was brought to you by several local sports-minded businessmen who hope you have enjoyed today's game and by the staff of WKHA-FM 102.3 on your FM dial who urge you to patronize the sponsors who make these broadcasts possible. Remember, you can hear all the New York Mets games at home or away night and day on the FM voice of WKHA Radio in Saratoga Springs, New York. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.